Welcome back to The Bank Guide. I'm your bank guy, Colin. And today is another video in the 5-Minute Logic Expert Series where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for recording, mixing, and mastering in Logic in 30 days. And today, we're looking at signal flow. This is probably not going to be my most popular video, but it honestly maybe should be because this is so important to understand. Signal flow is kind of like the hidden way that sound moves around behind the scenes inside Logic. It's not something that you know unless you are explained it or you figure it out over time. It's not super obvious. At least it wasn't to me. Maybe you're way smarter than me. I don't rule that out. That's totally possible. But it took me a long time to really understand signal flow. And my hope is that in about five minutes today, we can get through everything you really need to understand about the basic signal flow inside Logic. So let's not dilly dally. Let's get straight into it. So when you first pull up Logic, you're going to see this menu if you're creating a new session. To create a track type, you have software instrument, audio, drummer, extra MIDI, guitar, bass. Now, it's worth pointing out that Really, there's only two types of tracks. There's software instruments and there's audio tracks. A drummer track is also technically just a software instrument track. It's just kind of like Logic's fancy version of it for a drummer. External MIDI is also a software instrument track. And the guitar or bass track is just a preloaded audio track that has a virtual amp simulator on it like you would need for a, a electric guitar or bass recording. So either way, all you really have here is a virtual instrument or an audio track. That's the first thing you need to understand. Let's start with an audio track, and then I'm also gonna go ahead and create a software instrument track just for the sake of demonstration. Now, we'll just record a little bit of me talking here just so we can see an audio region on here just for demonstration purposes. So audio is going to come from something recorded in, or if you have a loop or a pre-recorded sound that you want to bring in, audio is going to come from there. That's where these regions are going to generate from. MIDI is could also be a loop. You could also draw in MIDI. So if I hit E on the editor window with this MIDI track selected, I could just draw in a note here. That's one way you could get MIDI into your session. Another way is if you have like a MIDI controller or something like this, you could just record and play a little bit of it in here. So that's how you get MIDI into the session. You could also bring loops in or, or whatever, sample packs, all those things. The big thing is that this is the starting point for a MIDI region. This is the starting point for audio. Now, it's important to understand that there is no sound associated with this region here. This is just MIDI information. So this is telling a virtual instrument to generate sound. So this is the virtual instrument here. If we're looking uh, on the left side, we have our MIDI track selected. This right here above audio effects is the virtual instrument that they have selected here. And you can change this out by going through the different plugin options here. You could also hit Y on the keyboard to bring up a whole much easier to look at, easier to kind of sort through selection of all the different sounds. You could turn this into a drum kit if you wanted. You could turn this into a piano, into horns, into strings. The options are really endless with a, a MIDI or software instrument track. So either way though, the thing to know is that the actual sound doesn't start here with this region. This is just telling this plugin what to do with the notes that you put in. And then the sound is gonna come from whatever virtual instrument plugin you have up. And you wanna pay attention to that because this is where you're really gonna tweak and perfect that sound initially before you do any sort of processing. Okay, so that's the first thing to understand about the region difference between audio and MIDI. Audio, this is the actual sound here. This is what we're gonna be hearing. If I were to play this back and you were to listen to it, you'd hear me talking. This is what we're actually hearing there. It's not going through any sort of virtual instrument. I could process it, but there's no virtual instrument generating that sound. Now, after it goes from the region and down through the plugin, in a MIDI case, or in this case, it doesn't need to go through a plugin, they're sitting at the exact same place. So after this plugin, everything following that is identical, whether or not it's audio or it's MIDI. So no one is ever gonna know the difference if a track was MIDI or an audio recording, as long as the virtual instrument is good enough. Uh, so something to note as well. It's just identical on the back end. After that, you go down through your plugins, any sort of processing that you wanna do. So for example, if I wanted to EQ this vocal track, the first thing I would do is add an EQ plugin here. And then maybe I wanna add a compressor plugin. And then maybe I wanna add some distortion on here. So I might come in and add, throw in a distortion plugin. And the audio is now going down through from this region 
down through each of these plugins in order from top to bottom. So the plugins process top to bottom. So it matters what order you put these plugins in. And a lot of this is just thinking conceptually through it. But generally speaking, I like to think EQ first because that's how I'm shaping the tone. Then if I'm doing any sort of dynamic control, I'll do that next. And then I'll get into creative effects after that. So that would be distortion or chorus or anything like that you might want to do. It doesn't have to be that process, but that's generally nine times out of 10, the process that I follow from top to bottom with my plugins. So our audio region will now go down through these plugins. Then it's going to go down to your volume fader, which is the next element here. This is how loud it's going to be. And then the final thing is the pan position. Position, left or right. You want to have the vocal off into the ear and then this MIDI instrument off into the right ear. Once it leaves the pan position, then it goes through your stereo out or master track. Now, you'll see this automatically if we're looking at this window here on the left or if we're looking at our mix view window, you'll see your stereo out over here. Uh, and this is one place where you can process all the audio from your song together. I highly recommend you do a little bit of master track processing. If you don't already have my six step checklist to a pro mix where I explain the six steps that all professional mixes have, master track processing is the second thing I do before I put any plugins on any individual tracks. I start shaping the overall mix just gently on the master track because it's one place that the entire song is running through. So a little bit of processing there can really jumpstart your mix. Anyway, so that's your master track. So your tracks come... I'm just going to keep going through it in order. Audio region or MIDI region. If it's a MIDI region, it hits the, the Virgil Instrument plugin. Then it goes down through your processing on that track, then your volume fader, then your pan position, and then it sends over to your stereo out. Now tomorrow we're going to talk more about buses, but in the meantime, just know that they are sends, meaning that I'm sending off from that track out to another track uh, so that I could process it in parallel over there. So if I, you know, send a bus 15, it generates bus 15. We can see that input up here, bus 15. And this now I could go in here and I could put a reverb, if I can find reverb on here, a reverb. Uh, and we'll just go with the space designer. And then I could send with this little knob here from this track over to this reverb this means that this audio will now send and go down through these plugins, hit this volume fader, this pan knob, and then it goes to the stereo output from there. So everything ends up at the stereo output to end. That's the, that's the general signal flow inside Logic. It's kind of confusing to get your head around initially, but understanding this is fundamental for being able to um, control the sounds and make them shape them the way that you want them to be inside your session and, and just have full control over your mix. It, understanding signal flow is empowering, it may be a little bit confusing. If this was a little bit too fast for you, go back and watch it again. I promise you can understand this. I'm not the smartest guy in the world and it, it took me a while, but I understood it. So I know that you can understand it as well. Uh, before you go, as I mentioned, if you don't already have my six step checklist to a pro mix, it's really going to help you out. It just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them specifically inside Logic. I tweaked and made a specific Logic version since I'm doing this five minute Logic Expert series. So it's really, really going to help you out. I'd also love to hear from you. Do you know about signal flow? Do you understand signal flow? Is this something you really ever learned? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with another five minute Logic Expert. One thing at a time.